Dispatch decisions in energy systems are about deciding who supplies energy, when and where. How do we make those decisions? Often markets are involved, but let's assume that we are in charge as a central planner. This might actually be true for local energy systems such as microgrids. Or we can use this type of thinking to check whether markets work as well as we hope they do. Either way, to reason about such dispatch decisions in a quantitative way, we will need models. Models for the cost and for the emissions of various generators and models for the constraints on their abilities. In this video, I will explain the concept of economic dispatch. In addition, you will also learn about simple models for generators, their costs, their emissions, and their technical constraints. And finally, I will highlight the importance of forecasts in dispatch problems. In real energy systems, there are many types of units generating energy. In this short video, I will illustrate the concept using only three different types. First, I consider renewable energy sources, such as wind and solar. Once we've built them, the cost of generating energy is effectively zero, and there are no CO2 emissions to worry about. Next, I add a category that I will call dirty fossil generation. This is a low-cost generator that has high emissions. And finally, to make the problem a bit more interesting, we introduce a clean fossil category. For example, you can think about power plants that have been fitted with carbon capture and storage technology. So here production costs are higher, but emissions are significantly lower than in the dirty fossil category. So what is the challenge we are dealing with? Well, we'd like to find an optimal way to supply energy over a certain horizon, let's say one day. And to do so, we start with the total load that we need to supply. And that varies considerably over time. So how should we use our generators to supply that load? Well, the first part is easy. We have solar and wind generation. And because these sources are zero cost and zero emissions, we want to use them whenever we can. But as you can see, this is not enough to fully cover the consumption. So this remainder needs to be supplied using a combination of our dirty fossil and clean fossil plants. How do we decide which of these to use and when? And that's where we need to formalize our problem and where the models come in. In the economic dispatch problem, the challenge is to minimize the cost of generation while limiting the CO2 emissions and respecting the various technical constraints of the energy sources in our system. So let's start with the first of these elements, the cost of generation. We only consider the variable cost of generation. So these are the costs that depend on our dispatch decisions. And for a given generator, this dispatch is reflected by the power level P at time T, where we assume that this power level is constant for some interval of time with a duration that we call delta T. Now in terms of this dispatch variable, we can define a function for the cost of generation in the time interval. And it's common to use a quadratic function for this purpose, with coefficients a1 and a2 that we must define. You can see such a curve here on the left for the dirty fossil plant. In this case, the generator becomes less efficient at high power levels. So you can see that its cost curve becomes steeper for each additional megawatt produced. The clean fossil plant has a similar curve, but at a higher cost. And as we mentioned before, renewable energy sources come in at zero cost. All three curves can be made using the same basic model, but with a different choice of parameters. And at this point, I should emphasize that this model is about variable cost of generation only. So it does not include operation and maintenance costs, and nor does it contain the investment costs. Now, clearly those are important for longer term decisions, but they are not part of the dispatch problem. And finally, I point out that dispatch decisions often span a series of time periods. So we can add up the costs for each of these time periods to determine the total cost of dispatching a generator. 
Having covered costs, we proceed to emissions that result from the combustion of fossil fuels. Now, to a first approximation, we can say that the emissions are linear in the amount of power that's being produced. If we produce twice as much power, we get twice the amount of CO2 emissions. And as with our cost model, we define a function with a parameter that we can adjust. For this simple model, a single parameter, B1, is sufficient. And clearly, for the clean fossil plant, we'd have a lower number, reflecting the fact that its emissions are much lower for an equal amount of power being produced. And we put this parameter to zero for the renewable resources, which do not generate emissions at any power level. And then we turn to the question of how we should include these emissions in our decision models. One way would be to place a constraint on the total amount of emissions. Another approach is to use an effective carbon price. So if we assume a constant price per ton of CO2, we can simply multiply our emissions by this price and have a formula for the cost of emissions. And again, as for the variable cost of generation, if we consider a dispatch problem over multiple time steps, we add up these costs for each time step so that we can calculate the total emission costs for a generator. So the previous two elements, the cost of generation and the cost of emissions, were related to what we would like the system to do. But we should also consider what the system can do. And that's reflected in two types of technical constraints. The first constraint is straightforward. Each generator has limits on the amount of power it can produce. Clearly, there's an upper limit defined by the size of the unit. And there is a lower limit that could be zero, or it may be larger than zero for units that need a minimum generation level to operate. And this constraint applies to all time steps in our dispatch decision. In addition, we have what's called a ramp constraint. It limits the difference that is permitted between the output power of a generator in two subsequent dispatch periods. So this, is, this reflects the technical constraint that it takes time to adjust this power generating process. And when we have not one, but multiple generators, these constraints apply to all generators, each with its own constraints. We use a subscript i to differentiate between these generators when we write the constraints. And the same is true for the ramp constraints of all generators. And that brings us to the point where we can combine all elements we have introduced up until now. So I've defined a variable cost of generation for each generator and an expression for its emission costs. And summing these over all generators and all dispatch periods gives us an expression for the total costs of running our system. In addition, there are technical constraints that we need to keep in mind. Now, in addition to these building blocks, we can add costs and constraints from other elements in our system. And we will be in a position to calculate the economic dispatch for the whole system. But that calculation itself is not covered in this video. What I do want to point out is the importance of forecasts in dispatch decisions. When we want to determine the economic dispatch for this system, we need to deal with sharp changes in power requirements. For example, here in the late afternoon. So how should we optimally use the resources that we have to deal with this rapid variation? So one crucial complicating factor are the ramp constraints of generators. They link what a generator can do in the future to what it is doing now. And that means we must consider what will happen in the future when making decisions about the present time. And this is done using forecasts. Forecasts of future energy demand and forecasts of future renewable energy production. So in this example, based on our forecasts, we might choose to start ramping up our fossil generators early in the afternoon, because otherwise they may not be able to reach their desired output in time for the evening peak. So to summarize, I've introduced the three elements involved in economic dispatch decisions. 
generating costs, emissions, and technical constraints. I've also shown you how to construct simple models for generating costs and emission costs. And when doing this, we only consider the variable cost of generation. The generator power output and its ramping limits are the most commonly considered restrictions on the generation units. And finally, you've seen the importance of using forecasts, especially when dealing with ramping constraints. It's of paramount importance to anticipate large changes in demand and renewable generation so that you can dispatch other units on time. Because in the end, we do not want to sit in the dark.